we have made the black fish camp. We're gonna get the enclosure, load that up on the boat, take a few shots of putting that on, and then we're gonna have to go pay the boat fee, the ramp fee, but then we'll get in the water. All right, first things first, we gotta take this bimini cover off. This is the tedious part. Each panel goes in a very particular spot. It won't go anywhere else. This looks like a front slot. I've got it marked right here, front, starboard. So this one goes right here. Go. and it does have snaps at the bottom but I don't snap those until we get the other pieces in and usually the panels are laid out in the way I took them down so it should go synchronously rear door no. <laughs> so it's not going to go synchronously but just for the sake of the video We'll go in the order that I am presented them with. Rear door, back here. And they go together just by zipping it on there. And then this will go on the outside and clamp to the outside of the pontoon boat. If you're wondering why I have these sheets around, it's because uh, in the warmer months it keeps it, keeps the plastic from sticking together. Let's see, this one is the starboard front. Okay, now we're synchronous again. And if I could go back and do it again, I would get a hard top installed. But I would have to upgrade my trailer before I did that because it adds a lot more weight. But it would have been worth it because to travel all I have to do is roll these panels up instead of taking them off and once you get two pieces on together you're supposed to zip together this isn't too bad to do in this weather it's a uh, low 60s right now so it's this uh, plastic is still pliable but when it's freezing cold whoo man very difficult because the plastic is almost brittle doesn't want to work with you now that we got that piece on we can step out here and snap some of these outside snaps that I can't reach from the bottom if you're a fat man like me be careful back here very easy to fall this storage container I could probably leave it in the back of the truck nobody mess with it but right there I know it's tidy since the last time I've been out I've consolidated everything down into one container now that's heavy but other than my camera gear and my sleeping bag and stuff it's one container Yeah. 
There we go. She is fully on. All right, guys, we're finally in the water. My bait's getting some fresh oxygen. Trolling right outside where Black's Fish Camp. Uh, 4.7, 4.6 feet of water. There's the smokestacks. Got the front door rolled up and open. Man, it feels good to be on the water. Doing these camping trips when you had to bring all this stuff, it takes a lot of time and effort. And unless you got somebody with you, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of focus to make sure you don't forget anything. Um, you know, you could come out here overnight without all this stuff. But uh, if you want to do a catch and cook, that's a whole bin of things. If you want drinks, if you want live bait, if you want to sleep in comfort, all this stuff is a part of it. And that's why I call this luxury pontoon boat camping, baby. All the amenities you don't want for anything. Here we go. come up this canal a little bit and there's been about a bunch of people fishing in here i think they're catching eaters and that's what i want so we can do a catch and cook so i'm just gonna cruise along here see if i can't find any structure for us to stop on and uh we'll throw a few rods out see if we can't catch a quick eater i've got one rig set up ready to go and then i've got these beautiful gizzard chat here I'm gonna get one out and cut it up. Drop it on down, see what we can't find. Beautiful gizzard chat. Mm -mm -mm. Looks good. I have a circle hook on a three-way rig big weight on the bottom and take this body section right here look at an oh look at in the top there just like that and I think we're gonna throw it off this left side out there in the channel a little bit let it hit the bottom I only brought four rods because I really wanted to focus on camping, but I do want to catch a fish to eat. So all I've done is I've just set that rod right there and you know the current's going out or into the lower lake. It doesn't really go out, <laughs> but it looks like it's going out. So if that catfish swims up and gets that bait, that rod will bend over and alert me. So. I'm going to get these other rods rigged up and ready to go and we'll at least throw out two or three rods all right okay i've got the blue cat rod by muddy river cat fishing out now it's rigged up a little bit different of a rig this is a carolina rig with a float so that it float holds the bait up off the bottom and that's called a santee cooper rig which just happens to be where we are and i just got a circle hook and a float right there and a little rattle hopefully that'll spin in the current and entice those fish to come bite and i'm going to put that headpiece of the gizzard shad that i just cut on there and we're going to toss this out the other side there we go yum yum let that hit the bottom there engage the uh spool set it in our old trusty monster rod holders bam ready to go i'm gonna put one more rod i'm gonna put this short rod out this is a foa double y rod it's meant for kayaks and youth anglers but i'm gonna drop that one straight down um, and have what's called a suspended rod so we'll have three rods out and hopefully we'll be able to eat uh catch an eater catfish on one of those all right so this foa rod is very stiff 
So I'm able to put a lot of weight on it. I'm able to put a big weight on it. And uh, this one is just like the Santee rig, except there's no float. So we call that a Carolina rig. Circle hook and uh, just a little bead. Maybe they'll like that little glow in the dark bead. And put another piece of our gizzard shad on here. Nice and fresh. And we're just gonna take that right here and drop it straight over the side. And then once it hits the bottom, once it hits the bottom, we'll reel up two or three cranks and put it right in the strike zone for those catfish. All right, just hit the bottom. So one, two, three, set it right there. There we go. All right, guys, we're fishing. All right, guys, we've moved spots. We're sitting right on a ledge, a little farther out into the lake, but still in the diversion canal. A little bit more boat traffic. But, um, you know, fishing right on a ledge. So we got 24 foot of water on our left side and 17 to 18 foot of water on our right side depending on how you look at it so we'll try that two different depths maybe we get something here Just, again we don't want to we want the big fish later tonight and i believe we might have a better shot we're going to camp up on a flat but um we're just looking for an eater fish right now so stay tuned well when i was reeling up in the last spot i had to pop one off so I'm going to try one of these FOA Customs and Gear glow-in-the-dark hooks. A little bit smaller than what I was using, but that's okay. We're looking for a smaller catfish, but these, I've seen these catch 60-pound, 70-pound catfish. So I know they'll do the job on whatever size we're looking for. Let's change it up a little bit. I'm not really, although mustads are my favorite. I'm not really tied down to any kind of specific hook. We lost the Demon Dragon on that last one, so we're going to put another one on. This is the PGH Bottom Feeders Edition. Put it right down there. Probably about five inches from the, from the hook there. There we go. Uh, more like three inches, three or four. All right, we finished off that gizzard shad. So now we're gonna try one of these very alive perch. This is gonna be on the Hellcat rod. This is a heavy action, one of the new yellow ones. All right, we're gonna to try to launch this one way out in the channel over here. There we go. Well guys, we just moved spots once again. Still no fish, still no bites, actually. But I'm getting hungry, so I got me a uncured Sanoa salami. Mmm. With some Mission Jack cheddar cheese here. Monterey style. Mission Jack blend. We're gonna cut that up and try it out. Try a piece of the cheese here. Ooh, that's pretty good. Mm. Hopefully now that I've whipped out food, an official bite and interrupt me. It's usually how it goes. It's good to see my boat lizard is still alive. Checking out the water down there. Seeing if there's any bugs. Still no bites, guys. Got the rods out. No bites yet. Well, folks, we got out here kind of late today. And, you know, the wintertime, the sun goes down early. So 
even though we haven't caught our eater fish yet we're gonna go scout for an awesome place to camp that's safe out of the wind and we can fish for some uh, big catfish tonight and possibly catch a smaller catfish to eat as well so i'm gonna reel up get everything stowed away for a brief boat ride we're gonna go find us a place to anchor and then we'll get baits back out and talk about what we're gonna do later get the cot set up and all that stuff So right now I'm looking for a shallow area protected by an island, a close island. And this island over here looks pretty good. The scary part about trolling around up here is all the un things you can't see. The cypress stumps, uh, all the different hazards. And that's a part of it. It's part of being adventurous and trying new things. But I do have my trusty dusty depth finder here and uh, it's going to show me that we're getting way shallow right now i'm going to trim that old motor up the map is actually off a little bit also want to be out of the traffic zone of where the boats are so that i don't risk getting hit in the middle of the night okay this is looking good this is looking real good 10 foot here 11 foot big stump all right i'm gonna cut the motor and put the trolling motor out oh yeah you can see the bottom there the other good thing is that if we sink we're not going to sink very far <laughs> I'm not worried about sinking. But this is getting pretty shallow over here. I might go back where we just were. Just neat looking at the bottom. Okay, we're in about five to seven foot of water. I'm going to turn the boat around and back up towards these cypress stumps and throw an anchor. And then we'll uh, come out towards the middle here and do the same thing. We'll throw an anchor and tighten up in between. That way, if the wind blows me in, I'm only going a few feet into those cypress stumps. I know that doesn't seem like a good option, but it's better than being blown all the way across the lake. And if it blows this way, I'll be protected from the cypress stumps or the cypress trees and everything behind me anyway. So it's win-win. All right, now we got to get the anchor settled. Double anchoring. Still floating back here. My propane tank out the way. So what we'll do, I think we're pretty close. Go ahead and throw that anchor out right there. Then crank up the trolling motor and go out as straight as I can from this spot. And we'll let just about all the anchor rope out. And then what that's going to allow us to do is to pull tension in between both anchors so that uh, the pontoon is double anchored. There's about 150 foot of anchor rope on the back end. The more you can put out, the better. Unless your angle ro <laughs> anchor rope is tangled like mine is. Oopsie. This is why I like doing this in the daytime before the sun goes down. <laughs> it's a lot easier. And you can see what you're doing. 
This is the new anchor from Never Lost. And I put a ton of rope on it, just for situations like this. Tie that off right there. If everything went perfect, it would not be my channel. The anchor is dragging the bottom back there. So now I'm gonna come up here. All right, now that we've thrown that anchor out flawlessly, nothing was hung up. We didn't have to stop the camera or anything. <laughs> Take about half this anchor rope, a little more than half. We're gonna launch it out there and I'm gonna tie it off just like that. Then we're gonna go back here to our back anchor, pick it up out of the water. We're going to pull the slack out. Get my container back here. There we go. Pull the slack out until that front anchor gets tight. That anchor's still dragging back there in the back. I don't like that. Oh, I don't like that at all. It's not good. We might have to try again, guys. Good news is that front anchor is hanging on strong, baby. <laughs> Very strong. Okay. Okay, I don't think it's perfect, but I think we are here in a good spot. Back anchor is tight. We'll see how it goes. We might have to re-anchor in the middle of the night. I sure hope not. <laughs> All right, well, let's get fishing. Okay, guys, we got the lines out here. Uh, sun's almost all the way down. We have our light hooked up, our complex light here. All I have to do is connect these two together. I don't have the remote with me and Voila, see our rods like it's daytime. We got uh, all my stuff still out here. When we start to cook, we'll bring that inside for a table. But otherwise, uh, bait cooler, got our dry box, our bait, got a light hanging right here. Got our lights hanging in the studio back here. Bait swimming around net ready to go so i don't have to go to the back of the boat everything is accessible and grab a tackle box right here uh, cameras are set up anchor box trash can i mean pretty good setup like i said from the last time i felt like i had way too much gear so i'm going to make sure that to conserve space i uh did did it did myself right and <laughs> took a little bit of stuff down but I got my cooler up here. I can't usually do that because it might fall off the boat, but I have the uh, in the enclosure there. And of course, this usually isn't here if I'm camping, uh, but I got my camera set up on a tripod. And uh, we'll come back around here. We got the heater out of the way for now. Got this sectioned off back here. I didn't talk about it earlier, but I got a new toy. I got a Ionic lithium battery down there guys i love it i can check the percentage on my cell phone with an app pretty cool i got my fan here again we're luxury camping a lot of people say kevin why don't you just camp on the couch right there well why don't we just go to a motel six when we go out of town we want to stay in something nice so this is all about luxury pontoon camping guys so don't judge me well, if you judge me, just uh, hit the thumbs up anyway. <laughs> we got our cot here. You guys have seen this if you've seen my other videos. This cot is pretty cool. And just set it on the ground. Pull the top off of it. 
just like that. It's kind of like a camp chair where it just folds out. Uh, you take the buckles off of it. Uh, no, just one, bu one buckle. And it just folds out very simply. You don't have to have any other pieces or parts. It just folds out. Now, of course, if you're in a tent, it is a lot easier to fold out than what I'm doing here. But you get the gist. And usually I'll lay out right here. Um, I always change my mind. Sometimes I say I want my head down there. Sometimes I say I want my head down here. Um, I think I like having my head down here because I can look out of the front. So that's how we'll do it. So we'll move this Ugh. all the way to the end there. And that way my head's poking out and I still got enough room to stand up. I have my carbon monoxide protector or warning right there. Um, and that's, that's the cot guys. Next we have a self-inflating air mattress. I think I had this on the last trip. I know I had it on my last camping trip. I can't remember if I had it when I come out here or not. Regardless, it uh, even though that this cot, you can camp out on it without one. You know, it's not that uncomfortable. We're luxury camping, guys. And it's sucking in air. Right through that cap. So we'll let that self inflate and it'll start rolling out there as you can see. Something you don't need to have, but definitely makes it a little more comfortable. All right, while that's inflating, got a couple other items here. This is my EcoFlow battery bank. It's the second lowest model you can get. Um, it has three outlets on the end. It has three USB ports, including a fast charge. USB-C has a light on there and it has a place where you can hook up a solar panel and a 12 volt 12 volt cigarette lighter plug charge it up on the end here but this thing will run everything I got and I've been testing it out at work it runs my speaker system so I don't have to plug my speaker system into the wall I can carry it around the school in a cart and uh, I'm very anxious to see how well it does out here I've already got some batteries that need charging but I need to get in here got my toilet paper there got my pillow I'll show you that in a minute and then we have my sleeping bag the sleeping bag is going to be way too much for tonight, but it'll ensure that I stay warm. This is a Coleman sleeping bag. It's an XXL sleeping bag. See bigger guys like me. I'll put a link into the description uh, for it. One thing is I messed up on is I got the zipper on the wrong side. All right, I believe this is a 15 degree bag that I reserved the right to be wrong and I will correct it on the screen. I'm just gonna take that, throw it out there. It is a little tight back here. See, I wish the zipper was on this side. Oh well, it'll do just fine, it has in the past. My first camping trip on the boat, I had this one and I got, I got too cold. But uh, I wasn't sleeping with a mat, and I also slept in all my clothes, which from what I learned later on is a bad thing to do. So I'm a little bit more prepared now. This pillow's kind of cool. Waterproof on the outside. Open that flat, it's called a climate pillow. And you shake it. Shake the pillow down into the cloth pillow part just like that awesome pillow right there 
sono fish it's only about 640 even though it looks like outside it's midnight but I have uh, shut all the lights down except for a black light up front just to keep you know keep me kind of aware of what my rods are doing I got all four out just freshened up the baits and uh, we're just gonna sit here got my feet up relaxing which you can't really see here we go here we go got my feet up four and foot up buddy heater down there yeah I got my phone here watching some YouTube videos relaxation man that's what it's all about full moon at night oh well guys crazy enough here it is uh after 10 o'clock no fish not a single bite which is crazy because if i look online i'm seeing a bunch of people catching fish doing the same thing using the same bait i'm using oh well excuses excuses we don't have a catching cook tonight but kevy is hungry so thankfully i brought a dehydrated meal that we're gonna cook right here on the boat i'm just gonna run through how we do that right quick and we'll keep fishing tonight and hopefully We'll catch one maybe while we're cooking. We'll get lucky and one will hook up. All right, I brought my storage bin inside um, to use as my table. And uh, what I'm going to grab is a bowl. And set that off to the side there. Let's see, we will grab got our towels here. Uh, we will grab our butane isobutane cartridge right there Let's see what else do we need don't need seasoning all right we'll grab this right here this is my jet boil and i'll show you how that works in a minute what else do we need drone we don't need that we might need our cooking utensil kit from gsi outdoors and then we need the food we need the food so we have Chicken Alfredo Pasta by Peak Refuel. I've had this before. It's pretty good, actually. So that's it. We're going to put our lid back on here. This boat did come with a table, but I find it's much easier to cook on this than it is to set up the table, which actually goes where I'm standing right now. Take off the lid. Have a stand here. Have the burner inside. And the rest is just a cup. What we want to do is take our stand. Open that stand up right here. It's probably one of the harder parts of it right here. Is just to get this butane in. Well, I say that and it fits right in this time. <laughs> what I get for assuming then we're gonna take our burner here flip out the ignition switch and we're gonna screw that on to the butane the butane I think that's normal <laughs> We're going to let that butane kind of... We need a bottle of water. And we're going to take this cup here. And it's got little notches in there. We're going to turn it into the burner and twist. So that that's locked on there now. Alright. We're going to fill our jet oil with a bottle of water. Drink the excess there. And hit that igniter switch. Oof, just like that. Now that we've ignited it, we can turn it up. And that should heat water up very quickly. Put this lid on here.
Now when these things get ready to go, this flame here will turn orange. And that's how we'll know that it's boiled and ready to go. Other than the audio and visual cues we'll get from the boiling water coming out the top. The flame here is orange, so we're going to shut it down. It's all done. Fettuccine Alfredo pasta. It's very hot. <laughs> Try to dump it in here. There we go. You don't have to use a bowl. Obviously, you can eat it right out the pouch. But then this wouldn't be luxury pontoon boat camping. Mm. We're just trying to do everything the most bougie as we can. Now, it's a lot easier to eat out the bowl than try to dig your spoon in this pouch unless you got a long spoon. I got one somewhere, but it's not worth looking for. All right, let's test it out see how good it is. Okay, nice and warm. Let's try it out. Heavenly Father, thank you for this meal. Thank you for this day. Lord, and uh, keeping us safe, we just thank you for all that you've done for us. And I just ask that you bless this meal for my body. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, here we go. Hmm. Not too bad, right out the gate. Could use something though. Got my seasoning packet here. Let's see. We got some salt. A little bit of salt on it. We got black pepper. And what would an Italian dish be without garlic? Mmm, a little better. I mix it in, put a little bit more of that garlic on it. You know, I am a little bummed that we haven't caught a fish. Um, you know, just sometimes it's not your day when it comes to fishing, and I'm okay with that. Uh, once the initial sting of not catching a fish wears off, uh, at the end of the day, I'm lucky to be out here on the boat enjoying a hot meal still even though I didn't catch it myself out here in the elements with all my bougie accoutrements uh, luxury camping on the pontoon but even uh, even with all that stuff it's just nice to be out here and I hope that you and your family get to come out and do it uh, whether it's camping on a pontoon or camping in a tent wherever just being out in the uh, openness the nature it, it feels different. I love the weather tonight. It's just cool enough to run the heater, uh, but not too cold to where I have to run the heater. I could easily slip in a slipping bag and be fine tonight, but something about running the heater and getting cozy, uh, I'm looking forward to it, even though I still like to catch fish before I go to bed. But anyway, if you have any questions about any of the gear I've used, uh, the bowls, the spices, the cot, the flashlights, anything that I have. The enclosure is from Toon Time LLC. But uh, if you want to know more information, just put a comment down in the comment section. And I'm pretty good about answering questions uh, and within a few days. So just keep checking back. Now, you can also check my other videos. I answer a lot of questions. But I do have some new gear in this video that you might have some questions about. So just put those in the comment section. This chicken alfredo is one of the tastier dehydrated meals. Uh, they all aren't made the same. <laughs> or they're all not equal, let me just say that. But this one is very tasty. And, um, you know, if I wouldn't have put so much water in it, I think it would have been even 
more tasty more of those spices and everything in there would have stayed with it i had to pour some of the liquid out because it was just way too much water read the the instructions on it don't put a whole bottle of water in there like i did it'll be too much and the longer you can go without eating if you leave the water in there and just let it steep the better the chicken will be uh, it'll taste more moist like actual um, fresh chicken i was planning on cooking this and frying up some catfish and had some fried catfish nuggets plus the chicken alfredo that would have been awesome for another time for another time mm -mm, good i ate all that delicious I guess for the rest of the night, I'm not ready to go to bed yet. I need to let my food digest. But uh, I'm going to see if there's anything good on YouTube. Or maybe see if I can download a Netflix video and watch that. And kick up my feet. And just enjoy being out here. And enjoy the heater. And uh, my full belly. Mm, maybe I'll fall asleep. I know I'm having a much better week than I did last week. Hey, Nina. Whisker Warrior. By the way, thank you very much. Good to see you in chat. Yes, it is. This is also before we had a lift. We were in the old shop, so uh, this year was a lot harder to build because we didn't have... No. I might have just revolutionized the way I camp, guys. I just, on a whim, decided to... You know, I'm done with catfish. So, I usually keep this front pane you know to where i can get to the front deck in case the catfish bites well i zipped it down reeled in the rods and i said i wonder if i could stuff my cot in between the couch and if, if it pressed up against the anyway i'll show you guys my cot fits in this space ever so snugly it pushes on the enclosure a little bit and it hangs over the couch just a little bit, but I mean, talk about perfect. And uh, it'll keep me from rolling out of bed, keep me uh, in my sleeping bag. I got the controls of the boat right there. I can pop up, jump in the seat real quick. And I have all this space back here for my heater, for the bathroom if I need it. I can get to my anchor real quick. I can't get to the front as quick, but if an emergency happened, all I have to do is unzip that top and bust it down. Awesome, we're gonna try it. Now I got my bougie fan hooked up here. Mainly just for white noise, guys. Level two, and it'll also, I think, blow the heat from the, the heater this way. That little medium there. All right, guys. I almost forgot to tell you guys. I got my little bougie booties on. Cause should keep my feet nice and warm in the sleeping bag. I'm gonna get these tennis shoes off. I'm gonna get these jeans off, and I'm gonna get in the bed here. All right, guys. I'm all cozy underneath the stars here. Toasty inside my sleeping bag, actually. But it's about midnight i'm gonna head to bed and i'll see you guys in the morning good night howdy neighbors it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood just woke up uh slept i guess after a while i slept pretty good um you know starting out with boat shaking everything you got a little bit of uh, uneasiness, I guess. Rocking back and forth, but I got used to it. And I slept probably about as good as I usually do. But it is around 6.15. The sun has not yet come up. Um, but I'm going to pack everything up. I'll spare you all that turmoil. Because that is the worst part uh, about camping on a pontoon. Is the limited space to pack everything back in those bags you got them out of. But I'm going to do that, and I'll be back at you. I'm going to get some baits out, and we're going to have some breakfast together. 
All right, everything is uh, pretty much stored up. I got some lines in the water. It's pretty brisk outside. The wind is blowing a lot harder than I thought it was going to today. But for breakfast this morning, I have two things. First of all, is our Peak Mountain Berry Granola. Delicious stuff right here, guys. Uh, probably my favorite thing that they make. All you do is add water in there and it has powdered milk and it just, it tastes delicious. Uh, so we're gonna serve that up, but I also brought some other stuff to fry up in the pan. It's not bacon, don't get excited. Get a little bit of cheese there. We have some ham, some wonderful Christmas ham. All right, let's get started here. I did remember to bring butane this time. Uh, unlike the last time I tried to cook on the boat, I uh, forgot to bring the butane. Boom. Whew, there we go. Finally got it cranked up. I'm gonna simmer that down just a little bit. Get our pan on there. While that pan is heating up, I'm gonna open this granola. They got a little packet that's in there. And use the water I didn't use last night. Pour that in there. I don't want it to be too soupy. I'm just going to try a little bit right now. Get that in there. And just like the chicken alfredo from last night, you got to let it soak up the water in there. So we'll leave that off to the side while we're cooking. Get my utensils set out here. Let's see, we're gonna need some tongs. And spoon. I got the long, here's the long, no that's not, yeah this is a longer spoon, I'll use this one. I think that's all I should need. These tongs are awesome. They fold out. So they save space. Put a little bit of butter in there. Turn down the fire a little bit. A little too hot. I brought a lot of ham because I thought that I was might snack on it a little bit, but didn't end up doing that. So we're just gonna use a big chunk like that. Pretty nice piece of ham right there. It should be good. I don't think I need to use the rest of this. Check on our granola here. It seemed like that was about the perfect amount of water in there. And then flip our ham in there. A little piece of cheddar cheese. Mm. Put a little cheese on top. That may seem weird to some of you, but it's the ham and cheese without the sandwich. Ham and cheese without the bread.
All right, I'm going to turn off the heat to the hand. I'm just going to let that continue to simmer while I eat my granola cereal. Heavenly Father, thank you for keeping us safe last night. Thank you for this awesome meal. And Lord, if you see it fit, Lord, bring us a fish. If not, you've already supplied so much. And we just give you thanks for everything. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Amy, let's eat. So hungry right now. This is so good. It's got the right amount of sweetness without being too much. The sun is definitely up. You hear the hunters out there. This is definitely my favorite thing about the camping is waking up in the morning. I mean, it's nice going to sleep to the sunset and all that stuff, but waking up to that sunrise and having breakfast on the boat, for some reason, that's my favorite part. I just love it. Mm. We could just get to that part every time. That'd be great. The only thing I didn't show you guys that I had to eat yesterday it was a fruit cup well, right before I fixed the Alfredo last night <clears throat> I was just uh, I was so determined to get that fish but I was hungry and I needed to eat something so I ate a little fruit cup but you didn't miss much cereal always hits the spot alright it's time to eat our ham and cheese baby mm mm good Mm. <laughs> Man, that's savory. <sighs> I love ham. It's a must have for me. I'd rather have it than turkey, to be honest with you. Bacon would have been top notch as well. This knife and the other knife that comes with it in the GSI outdoors kit that I have all my utensils in, they're really sharp and they come that way. I really like that kit. If I can find it, I'll put it in the description for you. Well, that about does it for the meal, guys. I'm going to pack up, clean the dishes up a little bit, pull the anchors, and I'm going to go try to find a space somewhere on this lake where there's a fish hanging out. Good morning, lizard. How are you? He got nice and warm last night by the heater. He turned green. Anyway, guys, we got the back anchor up. We're gonna get the front anchor up and head out fishing. Today just wasn't my day or these past two days. I gotta go. My parking pass is only good for 24 hours. But I still had a great time out here enjoying Mother Nature. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up, share it out. Leave me a comment, tell me what you liked about it if you have any questions. And uh, check out my other camping videos and see if you like them. Until next time everybody, happy fishing.